Hello, welcome. I'm so glad to connect with you today. And in this video, I'm going to share with you five tips or steps that you need to take if you want to quit your day job and come out of the spiritual closet as a spiritual healer, practitioner, entrepreneur. So stick around. Okay, so before I give you the five tips or steps to making this transition for yourself, I want to give you a little bit of background. So I come from a family of teachers. My mom was a teacher. My aunt was a teacher. My uncle was a teacher. So growing up, I started telling everybody I was going to be a teacher at about four years of age, right? And that's pretty normal for a young child. We imitate. We learn through imitation. So started preschool pretty young, had a family of teachers. It's what I saw. It's what I knew. And so it's what I wanted to be. And I never wavered. I set out on that path. It was always what I was going to do, and it never changed. And so I got my undergraduate degree, and then I went on to get a master's in education. And then I started teaching full time in the public school system here in the state of Colorado where I live. And that was that, right? I had achieved my goal, and there I was. And I never imagined in a million years that I would do anything else. And I actually didn't really think I could do anything else. The idea of being an entrepreneur was never on my radar. That seemed like only really special, talented people could do that. And so there I was, and I guess I thought I'd live out my career kind of like my mom, who retired after 30 years and, you know, the rest of my life was just planned and I had arrived and isn't that great? Except... I'm on a spiritual journey. I'm a spiritual seeker. So that wasn't enough. And pretty soon in my career, about seven years in, which is interesting if you study like astrological cycles or anything like that, and the significance of the number seven and the chakras and the Bible, is that after seven years, which is really kind of the end of a phase, right? That is when I started to look around and be like, do I really want to do this? Is there something else that I'm meant for? And I was teaching at the height of No Child Left Behind, which was legislation passed by George W. Bush. And it had mandated a lot of things in the school. And we were at the height of the testing. And we started to create this test that would test how they were going to do on the actual big end of the year test. And then we started testing to see how they would do on the test that tested for the test. And when we started doing that, I started being like, there's no creativity here. I don't feel that this is aligned with my values. And I think I need to make a shift. So one day a student came up to me and said, Miss Haynes, you know, school is a lot like prison. And I couldn't argue. I said, you know what? It kind of is. And I thought to myself, you know, I don't, I don't want to be in prison. And I think I, I think I want to leave. I think it's the time to leave. But there were some things that happened first that guided me on this pathway. And so I want to share that with you today in the five steps. So step number one is actually tell the truth to yourself. This is the first and most important step in any sort of big change. We have to be willing to say, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't, I don't want to stay here. And you know, sometimes this is one of the biggest things that my clients get out of being on the phone with me. They might be in a really big transition or they might be thinking about making a huge change. And sometimes we're so confused and we're unsure and we just haven't admitted the truth to ourself. So if we can just write it down in a journal, start to speak it out loud to ourselves, admit the truth. For me, it was like, I'm going to leave my career. I am going to leave my career. I am going to quit my job. And I didn't start telling people right away. I told myself. I admitted the truth to myself. And then I went to what is step two, which is, you know, clear the cobwebs, as I like to call it. Really get clear. So the way that I teach people to clear the cobwebs is through energetic psychic work. I call it healing the psychic way. It's a four-step process that I teach. It's grounding, running energies, earth and cosmic, filling in with a gold sun, you know, setting your auric boundaries. And that 
helps you clean and clear your space so that all the old programs from the past, all the old belief systems that you inherited, maybe in other lifetimes or from your family when you were really young, all those glass ceilings, all those places where you feel like it's not possible for you or you can't do it or you can't make that change. Because I certainly bumped up against a lot of glass ceilings of like, who am I to think this isn't good enough for me, right? It was good enough for my mom. It was good enough for my uncle, good enough for my aunt. Why isn't it good enough for me? Who do I think I am? That like I, you know, all that stuff that gets in the way. They're just energy pictures. But we need to clear the cobwebs. Another way that I cleared the cobwebs, I started reading books. And I highly recommend this book, The Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer, The Journey Beyond Yourself. So I started reading this book and I started realizing, because as I started thinking about leaving my career, it was like, well, what about my consistent paycheck? And what about my health insurance? And what about my retirement plan? Like, I can't leave. I can't leave. I literally felt stuck imprisoned, chained. It was like these things were so monumental and so important that there was no way that I could live my dreams or make that shift because I was like plugged into the matrix, right? You know, when the scene in the matrix, when it's like you see all all the little beings, the humans, the bodies, and they're all just like actually plugged into the matrix. That's what happens energetically when we are part of systems and a job and a career and we're plugged into all this stuff. We begin to think that our money, our security, all of that comes from our job. And I really had to deconstruct that no, in fact, I am a sovereign being and my money My sustenance is God. I will be sustained by the love of God. Okay? So this book was instrumental in getting me to really start to think about and understand and realize that I was tethered. My soul was tethered to lies, to belief systems that were untrue. And I needed to clear the cobwebs and get those lies out of my space. Another thing I did in this phase of just really getting clarity and clearing the cobwebs was go on a Vipassana meditation. Now, if you've never heard of Vipassana, it's a meditation practice. It is the meditation from the lineage of the Buddha, and it teaches sitting and meditating, right? Keeping your eyes closed, not moving, sitting. And I flew out to California... (laughs) I still can't believe I did this. This was on the recommendation of a very close dear friend. And they had been bugging me and bugging me and bugging me and bugging me for a very long time to do this. And I was finally like, fine, this is how I'm going to go and really get clarity. I remember it was the summer solstice time. It was um, after the school year had already ended. So now I was in um, June June 21st, right? Summer solstice time. And I had to be really sure if I wasn't going back for the next school year. So I get on a plane to California and a woman is going to pick me up at the airport who I've never met. She's going to this Vipassana too. And we drive together through San Francisco, up north, over the bridge, you know, into Northern California to go to this Vipassana center. I turn in my keys I turn in my cell phone and for 10 days, I do nothing but meditate. You can't write, you can't read, you can't make any phone calls, you can't look on your phone, you can't do anything. Now let me tell you that I spent a good chunk of this time being angry and irate with the person who thought that it was a good idea for me to go on this. I was so mad. And then mad at myself that like at the height of summer of activity, when you want to be out and exploring and camping and doing stuff that I was like in this like deep retreat, right? And I remember I would like wake up in the morning and the bell would ring at like 5 a.m. And then I would rush off to go have breakfast because this was the only time of the day that almond butter was set out. So you could have fruit or a piece of toast with almond butter. And then at lunch, 
you know, there was a lot more food and there was a salad bar and all of this, but then you didn't have dinner. So around four o'clock you had a piece of fruit or tea and that was what you had. And then you were fasting basically from five o'clock until five the next morning. You couldn't make eye contact. You couldn't look at anyone. So there was a tremendous amount of healing that occurred during this experience and a tremendous amount of clarity that came from having 10 solid days of no distraction, no outside influence, and me just sitting with myself. I healed a lot of energy. I healed a lot of painful things. I saw a lot about my life and I got really, really clear that I was leaving my job. Because if there were chains that were binding me, if I truly felt, like he talks about in this book, that I couldn't live without this career or this job or this paycheck, then it was time to jump off that cliff and to find out. Because I had a suspicion that that was not true. So that's step number two, clear the cobwebs. And I recommend you do it through meditation. And if you don't love to just sit and do nothing, I have a great meditation. I'll post the link down below. It's free. It's an easy four-step process to get you really anchored in your body, feeling what you feel like, clearing out that old energy, and just really making you the predominant senior energy in your space so you're not absorbing everybody else's opinions and thoughts and feelings, okay? So that's step number two. So step number one is tell the truth, right? Start to tell the truth to yourself. Step number two is clear the cobwebs. Get really clear on what you're doing. Meditate on it. Ground. Run energies. Get clarity. Step number three is come up with a business plan. Come up with what are you going to start as your business? What is your offer? You know, if you're trained as a psychic, are you going to do psychic readings? If it's Reiki, are you going to offer Reiki? If you have coach training, are you going to be a coach? You know, do you want to write a book and be an author? Do you just want to be like a guide and an expert? Maybe you're going to start a YouTube channel and you're going to offer people, you know, mentorship sessions, right? And so there's a little bit of an edge here because sometimes we think that we have to be like super overqualified. And what I actually see most often with women who come to me is it's not that we're just like, we have no qualifications and we want to put ourselves out there and offer to help people and and we're not qualified at all. It's actually the opposite. I see a lot of talented spiritual women who have degrees and higher education degrees and trainings and they've done coaching courses and they've done all kinds of things and they're still getting ready to get ready, right? They're still thinking they're not quite ready. So even if you think you're not ready, you probably are ready to create some offers and help people. Look at the laws in your state, you know, Um, There are laws around if you're going to be a counselor or things like that, but for a lot of places, you can be a, a consultant, you can be a coach, you can be a mentor for other people and put yourself out there and you don't have to have like an official license. So look at, you know, where you're coming from, the trainings that you've had, the education you've had, everything that you've invested in and turn around and use that as an offer. So that is step number three. So we've got number one, you're going to tell the truth. You're going to tell the truth to yourself. Number two, you're going to clear the cobwebs. You're going to start doing your energy work. You're going to make sure you're making these choices from a very grounded place. And number three, you're going to get really clear on starting the right business. What is the business that you are going to begin? What what is it? What are you going to offer? And then step number four is come up with a menu of offers. I like to recommend that people come up with three offers, have a low, a medium, and a high. So that low offer can be like a small bite. It can be like one month of coaching along with like some extra resources, or it could be two months of coaching with some extra resources. Or for someone like me who does one-off sessions of clairvoyant readings, maybe my small bite, which it is the, the lowest tier of how you can work with me is to buy a reading right? And then the next level is going to be more of your signature program, more of what is the offer that's the meatiest offer that you have that you want to offer to people. And then finally, like a higher level 
option, which might be a longer term program, a VIP program, you know, what those people in your mid tier would go into. So once you have three products or three offers that you can sell, maybe it's a one off session or a small bite, it's a program, and then it's a VIP package, or it's a course that's like a much lower level course, 97, 197. And then maybe it's coaching with you. And then maybe it's that higher tier. Come up with three products or services or offers that you can offer to people. And then you are much closer to coaching. So we're going to tell the truth to ourselves. We're going to clear the cobwebs. We're going to start the right business. And we're going to come up with a menu of offers. And we're going to have at least three offers that we can sell to people. And so that's number four. And then number five is cash flow, okay? Thinking about cash flow. So if you have nothing saved up and you have nothing to help you in this transition, I don't necessarily recommend that. So what I did in my story is I actually was like, where could I get some money? Because I didn't have any savings. I didn't have a nest egg, you know. Um, so I actually started asking this really powerful question that comes from access consciousness. And it's like, what must I perceive, receive, believe, know to find more money right away? And what I've found in this question is it's a generative question and it gets us starting to think on a bigger scale, right? Because sometimes we're so overstimulated, we're overtired, we've got so much going on that we might not even be thinking clearly about where we can get extra resources or funds. So I started asking, what must I know, be, perceive, receive, know, to have more money right away? And anything in the way, I uncreate and destroy. And I realized that if I cashed in my retirement, that they were going to pay half of what I had. So I ended up with $20,000, which for me at that time was huge. I had never been given a check for 20 grand and it definitely made me feel like I could allow my nervous system to relax and leave my career with a little bit of a cushion. Okay, so I left my career, I cashed in my retirement, I was willing, I'm not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice, this is what I did, because I, you know, was like, I'm willing to hedge my bets and bet that I have enough earning power in the rest of my life to build up another 20000 to have an nest egg, I'm not worried about having that retirement right now. And what I actually need right now for my soul and my spirit is to get out of my career. And if $20,000 cash helps me make that transition, I'm in. So I cashed in that retirement. I went to Tulum, Mexico, because you get a bunch of cash, you got to go on vacation. That's my opinion. I went to Tulum, Mexico. I did some yoga teacher training. I really enjoyed my life. I had a little bit of fun, all of that jazz. All right. And so also there's just kind of an added little step in here. I just want to speak about before we go, there's really kind of a, a, a sixth step, which is once you have told the truth to yourself and once you have cleared the cobwebs and once you have figured out what business you're going to start, and then you've got at least three offers and then you're looking at, you know, do I have stuff saved? How much does my body, my mind, my spirit, my nervous system need to make this transition? Then you start speaking the truth to others. That is a really big part of this. The next step after you know your plan and you've got a little bit of cash, or you might say, you know what, I don't have any cash, but I'm not worried about it, or I have this, or I have that. You know, there's places that we have resources and money. And so just start looking at where am I not seeing possibilities? The final step is to speak the truth to other people. And that was the hardest part of the whole thing. I came up with my plan. I went through those steps. And then I had to tell my mom, I'm leaving my job. And she cried. And she was angry. And she was upset. And she felt like I was going to become a bag lady. And she thought that I was going to, you know, be dependent on her for the rest of my life. And she just thought I was ruining my life. And I had to hear her and see her and you know I had empathy for that and and not let it change me because that is an adult that is differentiating deconstructing from our family of origin and that is what it is to be an adult 
So I hope that these steps have helped you and that it helps to learn a little bit more about how I did what I did and the actual like practical steps of how I made the shift from being a full-time career woman to being out as an entrepreneur on my own. After I cashed in that money, I started, you know, investing in my business. I started investing in coaches. I used some of that money to grow my business. I started giving readings over the phone, right? I built up my website. I built up my offers. I built up all that stuff. And that was really the foundation upon which my business was built. And so that's what I recommend that you do. And I will come back for a part two of how I became a clairvoyant, how I knew that that was the business that I wanted to start, how I discovered my gifts and grew them along the way. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.